Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and look at how the slicer you use can affect how you uh, do 3D printing in the classroom. Uh, the project we're going to go over today is how to make loaded dice. Uh, this could be for a STEM class, uh, strictly a math class, maybe in middle school that's doing probability, all the way up through high school, a prop stack class. Um, I could even see this being used with a lower school uh, class that's kind of advanced. Um, or maybe you want to try to do some like inquiry-based where they just kind of play to figure out what's going on. Uh, but what I'm going to try to do is use the 3D printer to make dice that are unloaded, that are going to roll um, equally and show numbers uh, equal uh, amounts of times. And I'm going to try to create a dice that when I roll it, more often than not, it's going to land on one number versus the other. Now, the cool thing is the kids aren't going to be able to tell uh, by looking at it. They're not going to be able to tell by rolling it around in their hands. The only way to figure out which of the two die is loaded is by um, conducting an experiment. So first of all, I need a dice, right? And I'm going to go back and forth on the word die versus dice because I just can't figure out a way to keep it consistent. So I'm going to apologize for that ahead of time. Um, in some of the other tutorials on our website, uh, remember that's www.d2md.org, we've gone over how to CAD model and design in 3D uh, using Tinkercad and Fusion 360. So if you want to make your own uh, die, you definitely can do that. Um, but the key here in, in making it loaded is how we use the settings on the slicer. So the first thing we need is a die. So I'm going to go to Thingiverse, and I'm not going to um, download one, or excuse me, design one. I'm going to download one. And when I've done this in the past, I've used this model of, of the dice by Andrew Sarah. Thank you very much for putting that on Thingiverse. And the key here is the slicer that I have. I use Simplify 3D. I think it is the greatest slicer. It allows you to control so much if and when you decide to get into that. If you're a teacher who's new to 3D printing, um, this isn't too advanced, but it kind of shows you why this slicer might be worth the investment. Uh, most 3, 3D printers, when they come, uh, they come with a software that you can download. For example, if you're using like a FlashForge Finder, you can use FlashPrint. That's a great little slicer, but Again, I don't think it comes close to what Simplify 3D can offer. So I'm going to highlight those features of Simplify 3D um, for you to kind of understand how I can make this dice work. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to make unloaded dice. I'm going to import the die that I made. And when it pops down, the number three is facing up. And it lands on the bed. And if I hit center in the range, it's going to bring it right into the center of the bed. And I could go ahead and print that. Every time I kind of get into my workspace, um, a process pops up and it's specific to the type of 3D printer that I'm using. And right now, my slicer, Simplify 3D, is set up for a Maker Gear M2. Uh, it's a great little printer that we use, but if you don't have that printer, chances are Simplify has your printer. Under Help and Configuration Assistant, I can change this to be any of these printers. So, for example, one of the printers we have at our school, it's a little uh, Delta Arm robot, is called the CME CNC Orion. And when I hit finish, it's going to change the uh, kind of like look of my virtual print space. And notice that the part is all of a sudden missing. So, again, all I do is hit center and arrange, and it drops it onto the bed as flat as it can get in its orientation, and it centers it. So, Underneath these processes, a little shortcut is when you select your profile, the more you kind of rack up and save, I even have some for different printers with different types of plastic. Uh, notice here is our maker gear for this elastic type of plastic we found. Um, one of the printer or plastics we've been using recently is Raptor PLA from Maker Geeks, um, and that is dishwasher safe. So we actually have a, a certain setting for that as well. The only thing that really changes is the speed and the temperature. That has nothing to do with today's lesson. The thing that we're going to focus the most on is the infill percentage. So you can actually hide the advanced if you wanted to, and you could do this all on the kind of like simple basic settings here. So what I'm going to do is make this 10%. I'm actually going to hit OK. And notice it went back to the maker gear. I have centered and arranged the part. And when I hit prepare to print, what I love about Simplify, and this is true of most slicers, is you can walk back in time and look to see how each layer is going to form. Right. So there is my 10% infill. 
And if you haven't looked at infill, and you don't know what infill is, um, the part that you print isn't solid, right? It has these hollow components that you can control. The, the smaller these, these shapes are, and in this case, it's, it's default setting is a hexagon, the less in, or excuse me, the more infill there is. The bigger these shapes are, the less plastic you're using, the less of a percentage of infill. The cool thing about Simplify 3D in this process, if I decide to show that advanced, is under the tab infill, I can actually control the shape. And I can control angles, I can control distances and heights, you name it, I can control it. But I want to keep this at 10%. And I'm going to go ahead and I change it to a grid. And you're going to see this time when I walk it back that the inside shape has changed. So you can actually fine tune that based on the print. And you could use this little slider down here as a preview of what things are going to look like. So if I printed this model up, I would have one die that I could roll and I could experiment with to see does any of the numbers come up more often than not. And I should get an evenly distributed pattern. If I graph this, if I use little stickers, if I was in lower school, all the way up in the high school, if I tried to run a statistical analysis, I should be able to see that each of the six numbers comes up equally if I roll the dice enough times. Um, and I mean, think about it. How long does it take to roll a die, write a number down? You could get maybe 100, 200 rolls per group of students. That's a lot of data. Now, I'm not going to print this thing up. How many, how long does it take? It takes about 27 minutes, according to my little build statistic estimator here. I'm not going to do that, let's say, 14 more times. Let's say I have a class of 30. Hopefully, you don't have a class of 30. But if you do, you can work in groups of two. And you're not going to come back to the printer all day trying to switch it. So the cool thing about Simplify is under Edit, I can duplicate these models as many times as I want. So now I'm going to print 15 all at once, and it's going to actually take less than 15 times 30 minutes. Hopefully, we're going to take a look here, and we're going to see it takes about two hours and 48 minutes. That's not a long time. You print this in a day. You can print it on your way home if you want to let it run overnight. Um, you could actually print some up in the morning, and then after lunch is when you can make the loaded die. So this might be step one of your um, experiment or the lesson you're going to run with your students. Print up the die. Don't tell them anything. Just let them show, hey, when I roll the thing, they all come up equal numbers of times. And they think that the cool factor is you 3D printed these dice, right? Then what you can do is I'm going to go ahead and start with just one again so it doesn't seem overwhelming. Is you can make the dice loaded. And you can't do this on every slicer, which is why I'm highlighting Simplify here. Underneath their tool menu up here in the top is one of these wizards they have that kind of walk you through certain things associated with the program. I'm going to go to the variable settings wizard. I'm going to click that. And when you look and you see, all of a sudden this little plane comes up in the middle. And I can control where that plane is. So I'm going to go ahead and move it right to where I think is about three quarters of the way up. And if I really want some control, I can type in my numbers over here. Maybe I'll make that 16. I hit OK. Excuse me. Now I'm going to add that as a location where I want to split this model almost into like two separate pieces. It's not. It's not going to be two separate pieces. It's going to be two separate processes. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Add Location. Once I add a location, the little color of that plane changes. And now I can split the process by clicking on this button, Split Process. Down in the left-hand corner, as you can see, I have now two processes, process 1.1 and process 1.2. When I click on 1.1, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 10%. I'm going to make sure that my infill is still in the grid pattern. When I go to process 2, however, I'm going to change the infill and bump it up to 50%. Remember, the higher the percentage, the smaller those shapes inside are, and that means more plastic. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now I'm going to prepare to print. It's going to give me the option. I want to do one of these or both. I'm going to select all, and I'm going to hit OK. Notice when I go ahead and look at the preview, uh, excuse me, it's shown up in two separate colors. And it just happens to be right where that plane was inserted, where I'm going to go ahead and split these two processes. So if I walk back in time down with the slider on the bottom, again, I can do it by hitting the down arrow and go layer by layer. And in this case, since it's a small part, that's not going to uh, take too long. Or I can go ahead and move the slider. As I start to walk myself back, when I get closer to that other blue color, at least I think it's blue, I'm colorblind, I notice that the infill changes. <clears throat> so again, 
from the bottom of this print, oh, excuse me, all the way to the top, it's going to be 10% infill, just like the other dice that you printed. But when you get closer to, to the where you split the process, now all of a sudden the infill is going to bump up and it's going to put more plastic down. And that's going to be one side of this dice is going to be kind of weighted unequally because there's more plastic. And this is how you're going to create your loaded dice. The kids are not going to be able to tell as long as you don't use clear plastic. If you use clear plastic, they're going to see the infill pattern. Um, and that's one of the cool things about printing. Some people use like these translucent plastics to show the inside. I would not do it with this project. I would definitely find an opaque plastic. Um, and now you can tell the kids, hey, why don't you roll these die and say, do you notice anything that's different? Or you introduce a new color of die and say, hey, this is a loaded dice. You're going to tell me how it's loaded. Maybe you print them up in the exact same color. Tell them that now you've introduced loaded dice and make them come up with the experiment. But what they should be able to do is graph the same way. And they're going to notice that one number is going to come up more often because gravity is going to interact with the heavier side more often. And you're going to get the number not three pop up more often, but the number four. And the reason you're going to get the number four is because our extra mass is up at the top. So when I roll it, that number three is going to orient itself down onto the floor or the table or whatever you're rolling these dice on. And you're going to see the number four. So their graph should be like, okay, some number one, some number two, some number um, three, some number five, some number sixes, but the number four should be dramatically higher. And we've done this in our classes. We've done it with middle school and with high school kids, and it happens every time. So you can introduce this a couple of different ways. It could be an inquiry-based lesson where you just throw a bunch of dice at them and say, hey, figure out which ones are loaded. You could give them dice that are different colors and make sure they know that some are loaded and some that aren't. Um, you could even have them attempt to draw the dice to show the way that it is loaded and guaranteed it's going to come back the way that you designed it using Simplify 3D. So it's a really cool project um, to integrate math with 3D printing and to kind of throw something unique and different at the students. Um, again, though, we don't want to be coming back and printing this thing like once so I can still, even with the split processes, um, duplicate this and make 15 loaded dice once I center and arrange them. And I select all the processes and I hit OK. And I give it time to slice. And I work my way backwards. Again, there's my 50% infill, and eventually it switches to 10% right at that place that you switched it. You can play with where you put that split process to see if you get you know, a different distribution of numbers. Um, and then you could uh, you know, maybe challenge the students to design their own dice that aren't shaped uh, like a, a classic cube. Um, you know, challenge them to load one side versus the other and see if they can um, figure out which ones are which. Warning, what I would not do is give the dice back to the kids for them to keep or else you might have some uh, entrepreneurs going home and taking um, advantage of uh, younger brothers and sisters um, in some illegal gambling. So you might want to make a little disclaimer before you teach. But it's a really cool project. And the fact that this slicer allows us to change the infill percentages kind of allows you to be creative with how you introduce probability into your classroom. Hope you like the project idea. Hope you like a little bit about Simplify 3D. Um, you can check out their product to use, see if your printer fits. Um, if it does, maybe you want to invest. Um, if you're interested in more project ideas, you know, follow us. We're on Twitter at Design to Make. Um, in our website, it's uh, kind of like an interactive blog and um, gives you some tutorials as well. It is www.d2md.org. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy your day.